to show the, the slip that I paid? Nope. Okay. Because sometimes I don't get the right information. Oh, uh, we're not like that. I had that one time. Yeah. And, uh, I showed the driver, I said, what? It's paid. Okay, let me call my boss. They didn't tell me that. Some of those other companies, they play games, you know? Yeah. They know. They're, they just play stupid sometimes. Oh, what? You paid? No, I don't know. I have to call the boss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what they do. We don't do that. Yeah. We know. I like to pay always with the credit card because if there's a mistake, we can confirm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Plus for us, if somebody you know pays with credit card, we know it's a good ride. You know, we know it's guaranteed that somebody's going to be there. You know, absolutely. <laughs> Nobody pays for no reason. You know, <laughs> sometimes four o'clock in the morning, these other companies they play games. You know, yeah, they make I a reservation. One of those. Some of the local cab companies, they show up if they feel like showing up. That's no good. You can't do that to people. You know? There's one somewhere in Port Richard that uh, we call them and then they get somebody else. Hmm. And, <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I told them, look, I can do that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can call and order a cab or a ride from my neighbor and just watch you show up for no reason, <laughs> you know, or something. Flying to today? Excuse me. Where are you flying to today? Unfortunate <laughs> Allegiant. Oh. Well, I mean, where to? Go Bangor. Bangor, Maine. Okay. Nice. I have some friends up in uh, Halifax, up in Canada. Oh yeah. Uh, near, not too far from there, I guess. That's nice. <laughs> yeah. Well, Canada is nice anyways. I mean, yeah. it's cool. People are nice, so nice. I mean, big country, but uh, you know, not too much population. So right. Still areas that you can relax and yep. enjoy. My friend took a picture of his house, and he's got nothing but trees around him. I'm like, man, give me a little piece, you know, yeah. between two trees. I'll move up there. <laughs> I have been I like there it. many years back. I went there three times. Uh, the first time I was at the capital. The second time I went to Montreal. Time Amazing that the first time the Queen was there. Oh wow! In a, inauguration of the leaf stamp. Oh wow! And it was 50 feet, and I didn't see. I mean, I know there's police in plain clothes. Oh yeah, gotta be yeah. But no uniform police whatsoever. And I'm saying, gee, <laughs> I'm 50 feet, no more. Yep. We don't do this in the United States. No. Impossible. Right. <laughs> But then I went on a tour, see a couple of buildings, and in the group was this short girl, but uh, once in a while she looked at me, and I took a look at her, and then I got close to her, 
and I said to her, I said, she wants security, aren't you? <laughs> she says, how do you know? I says, because that's been my life. <laughs> right, there you go. <laughs> that's like me, you know, when I drive, I could, I could spot the police everywhere, even undercover car, you know, because... It's unbelievable. I used to do that up north. I was an uh, auxiliary police officer, and uh, I used to drive an armored car up north, and you just get to know, you know. Yeah. You can sense it, you can feel it, you know, it's like... People ask me, how do you know? How do you know? Well, you know, just short of, you know, you can smell the person or whatever. I don't know. You know, it's like, you know, know exactly what it the is, way they look, the way they I've walk. Been, I've been mistaken, identified. I mean, with, with some people, I yeah. didn't care. There was a guy working with me for many years here in the States. Yep. And he said uh, to the big bosses, this guy was a Secret Service in Portugal. <laughs> I says, how the hell do you know that? <laughs> because I don't know that. Right, right, right. Says, I saw you talking to them. I says, yes, I have friends. Right. <laughs> that doesn't make me an agent. Right. <laughs> well, I did have friends there, naturally. Yep. Go out for coffee and stuff, but I was never, never an agent. I wish I were. It's a good pay. Yeah, right. You know? yeah. While they're walking Boston, I went to uh, I went to see a friend of me. She was in college. Was uh, she worked in the court? Uh, that was that thing, Court of Appeals. Okay. And the two guards. Are you a lawyer? I says no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, the good it? one was in Boston, the uh, Logan. Huh. You know, I had my coffee before before taking the flight. I'm walking in the sky from the, the uh, what the hell they call that? The guards, the federal guards that check us. Oh, uh, TSA? And, TSA, uh, yeah. yeah. But this guy was Homeland good. Security. I mean, a lot of them, they don't know what to do it, but yeah. this guy's really good. He look at me, look at me, he says, uh, he says, I can take you on this side, you don't have to go through. Mm -hmm. I says, how oh, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I says, no, I, I won't do that. I said, I'm retired now. He says, yeah. oh, oh. Uh, well, I just look at you, you know, say, I know, I know. He says, I know. People always look at me, and uh, I've been called the Portuguese Secret Service, I've been called the FBI, I've been called the CIA, but right. none of that. He right. <laughs> says, I'm a secure specialist. I used to train a lot of people. Oh, go. okay, okay. But the son of a gun, he really, he really. He must have been like retired uh, law enforcement or something or something, you know. Uh, this guy was good. Yeah. I mean, he was good. I mean, we're talking hundreds of people walking. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they look at me and says, I can't take you on this side. All right. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to wait with everybody else. <laughs> but when I fly, I don't know what it is. You know, it's like um, ever since I had the, the job to work with the armored cars, and I've been to the Federal Reserve Bank in New York City, underground, you know, everything's underground there. It's like where they store everything. And um, I go through the airport and it always seems to be my number. They pick you out for extra screening. And I tried to tell the TSA lady, I was like, look, I got more clearance than you do. I, I was able to drive to the plane on the tarmac. <laughs> you can't do that. I can do that. <laughs> you know? Unbelievable. Yes, but you know, it's like, oh, she's tried to claim it's just your number. Every day they have a number, they pick somebody. I'm like, come on, the guy in front of me is wearing a turban. The guy behind me is sweating and shaking. Use your mind. Something's wrong there, possibly. You know, you don't pick the person that has the extra clearance or whatever, you know? Yeah. It's like it was an old older lady and she well, was just there. She did, like you said, she didn't know, you know? I worked, I worked like for that. Paul Wright for 30, uh, 25 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was amazed when this was really amazing. They had a cleaner, a separate cleaner, a special cleaner for Dr. Land. You know, Dr. Yep. Land was the founder. And at that time, Dr. Land was also the uh, the president of the American Academy of Sciences. Very brilliant man. Right. And um, I was on duty at the entrance. There's another two doors to get to his lab. And so the cleaner came to me. You got a lot of power over here. I says, what are you talking about, Joe? I says, out of the blue, you got a lot of power here. I says, what are you talking about? Right. I, says, I says, I don't know what's going on inside the lab. I says, as long as the doctor's safe, my job is to protect him, nothing else. Right. You know? 
and, and I do everything I, possible to, to prevent people going there who doesn't belong there. Right. And he says, Dr. Lynn came in and he says, we have security today. Frank is on duty. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> Nobody else matters. As long as Frank's there, that's it. He's but okay. see what, you know, this is a gentleman that will take a look at you and they select you. All the police officers, detectives, were selected by a picture. Well, yeah. He was unbelievable. Right. And the other thing he had, a certain gift from God, that you talk to him once, right. and 10 years later, he knows your name. Oh, wow. And wow. I don't think I'll remember 10 years right. later. Yeah, but yeah. It I'm, was just unbelievable. I'm no good with names, but, well, it depends. It, it depends. Um, it, it depends, you know. It, yeah, me too, but I mean, one is like, you know, the job of security, you know, thousands of people go by. Yeah. You know? and, but I remember one or two, but not all of them, you know. Yeah. Sometimes I have to associate the face with another face and to remember, you know, things like that. Yeah. But, um, but the other thing happened was uh, they selected 300 people for dinner. 1991. That I didn't forget. It. And they gave me a plaque as a safety leader of the year. And I was very proud. Yeah. But no money involved. Uh, okay. No. No. No Rolex watch. Exactly. No, no money. Nothing. No, nothing. 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 Just the plaque. But that's that's nice to be recognized. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. But we go for dinner, and, uh, and I got to the hotel. So was, there's three tables at the entrance, and all three, 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 and then it gets a big ballroom. So I'm gonna stay here on the corner and see if they, nobody bothers me that I can have my my dinner. Mm -hmm. All right, so I sit down there, the third table on, on the inside. A lot of people walk by me and say, "Hi, Frank. Hi, Frank. Hi, Frank." And then comes the second guy, Doctor Bachman. This guy was so down to earth. I mean, he would talk to you like you are his brother. It's no oh, arrogance, oh. no. No, not that shit, that shit some people think is more than us or something. Was really, really a nice person. <laughs> but I didn't realize that he wanted to have dinner with me. And he says, uh, can I sit here? I says, of course, doctor. He says, oh, before I sit, let me shake hands with you. Nice. They give me a hug. And he said, I don't have words to thank you. Wow. For the job you have been done for this corporation, I don't have words to to tell you how great we are to have you with us. How many millions of dollars you saved, preventing lawsuits, in safety, in water, and electricity. Because I used to recommend things to change, you know, yeah. old bulbs and things like that, and leaks in certain areas. And, you know, when I made a tour, I know what to look for. You right. know, it's different from some, some people walking, you know. Yeah. And out of 300 people in security, I felt, you know, very nice. I felt really good, you know. Yeah. But I never asked them for a promotion, which I deserved, you know, I really deserved. But that alone was, was a great thing. Having the second guy in command of the whole corporation, yeah. you know. He walked and sit with you. Yeah. You know. He was executive and, uh, vice president and vice chairman of the board. It's nice that he uh, saw what was going on all those years, you know. But I, Most of I, them don't even know what's going on. Exactly. You know, you know the thing was, I never thought my reports would go higher than my security director. Right. But it did. Oh, well. <laughs> but I really did things, uh, you know. Uh, you know, I, I was 100% hundred percent in my job, you know. Yeah. And, uh, so my immediate supervisor was a military guy retired, and uh, we had a, a, the brand new building was made for earthquakes and stuff. They got rollers under the foundation, you know, and, and if there's an earthquake, the building moves a little bit back and forth, and it doesn't crack. You know? yeah. So my my security man, manager got a job. <laughs> Somebody gave him the job of manager. You know, this is nothing new to you. They have a godfather somewhere and they get the job. Right, yeah. family and you know, someone. Yeah. yeah, and we're taking pictures every single day. As they start building, 
in the foundation was taking pictures. Pictures. What, the, what, what is taking pictures? He doesn't understand any shit about security. But he's taking pictures, so they must be showing to somebody. But three years went by, building is done, $46 million. And uh, I made a tour, and I didn't like the center part of the building, but I didn't, I didn't say much. I only said this and this and that. It's too late now. And uh, what I'm going to go against, one of the greatest architects in Boston, and I was not doing that to go against the guy, I was doing that for the, be the best of the corporation right. and the people working there. The lobby was fabulous, you know, wide steps, not too high steps, the handrail was fine, everything was fine, but to get the center of the building, the steps were so narrow and high. And on top of this bad things of safety, the right side, the handrail, any person won't fit the hand between the wall and the handrail. Uh -huh. So how the hell are they going to support the body? Uh -huh. And so steep. And I, in my mind goes, I'm going to picture a girl with the high heels here. Oh, and the result's going to be what? Breaks one of the high heels, Balls. and she goes down and she's dead. Yeah. And then you got a huge lawsuit and the reputation. It's not good. So. My supervisor says, uh, would you come in my office? Sure. This was three years later. And he says to me, they want me to do a safety inspection. As you know, I know nothing. Mm -hmm. Would you do that for me? But do not write a report. Just give me all the information. It's okay, Bob. Yeah. It's done. No problem. 30 minutes. But I already knew I was going to do it. So I went there and I'll double check. I made 12 violations. I, ex I explained the violations. And the basement also needed sniffers because now they have chemicals that don't even smell. Very dangerous. And then I, I instructed the security personnel not to go in, even when the green light is on, to wait a few seconds at the double doors. And if they felt their tongue tingling, not to go in and come immediate out because I, I explained to them, I do not trust electronics. Yep. It's common sense. Right. See? But your tongue is something special that God gave it to you. And when your body's not feeling good, you're going to feel that thing tingling. Yep. All right. So I give that information to my supervisor. And then, of course, when I come with the story of the, the tongue, one guard talks to the other, to the other. No, 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 no. So my manager calls me. What is this thing on the tongue? <laughs> I says, Peter, the thing on the tongue, you should know. Yeah. It's not just to play with women. It's when you don't feel well, you smell something, or some chemical, or you eat something, or you drink something, it's no good. The tongue is going to give you the first signal and the, and the brain. So what I'm recommending them not to go in if they feel that situation and prevent loss of life. Well, I never heard that one. He says, well, we have, uh, God gave us a, a, a intelligence to, to think. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. But I learned a few things with the Portuguese police. You know, going out and uh, those guys, they really did a fantastic job. One day we were in the cafe Golden Gate. We have a kind of nice downtown. And uh, one closest guy to me, this guy was not even an agent. It was the guy who fired over. How they call that thing in English? Uh, archives. Okay. But he knew a lot of stuff because he had been a police officer, not in the Secret Service, but he was, had been a police officer before. And George says, We don't have any table on the back. I'm going to ask the waiter when there's a, a table on the back. We sit on the back and we count every person, men and women and children, who comes in. And the first thing we do, look up, see if there's anything that will fall in our heads. You know, little things, you know, but they, they are so well trained, it's just unbelievable. You know where they, all the 